Hi, this is Jim Clary, and again, welcome to our YouTube video, AirMod Training. In this video, Sarah will first describe the input file, then we'll give you the opportunity to pause your computer while you get to your modeling example directory and get ready to execute it, and then you can follow her along as we go through the execution using that input file to generate an input file that will be used later on in the AirMod system. Just one quick reminder, you'll see that the explanation of the input file can get rather detailed. Uh, don't be too concerned about it at this point, because remember, uh, a real advantage of these videos is you can always go back to them for reference as you need to as you work through your actual projects. So I suggest that in this one, that you just follow along with Sarah. It'll give you a good, broad um, idea of what the input file looks like. But uh, don't be too concerned about sweating all the details at this point. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Sarah. I'm Sarah with AirModTraining.com. I'm going to show you how to set up and run AirMinute in this training video. Our meteorological station is an automated surface observing system, or ASOS station, that records one minute data. So we need to run Air Minute before we can run Air Met. EPA created Air Minute to utilize ASOS one minute wind speed and wind direction data to address a large number of calm and variable winds recorded in the standard hourly ASOS data file. Each record in the one minute ASOS file is the running two minute averaged wind data. You can download the one minute data file from the National Climatic Data Center or NCDC for free. AirMinute uses the one minute ASOS wind data to calculate the hourly averaged wind speed and the output file can then be directly input into AirMet. For our example run, the 2014 one minute ASOS data was retrieved from the San Luis Valley Regional Airport slash Bergman Field located in Alamosa, Colorado. And typically your reviewing agency will have specific guidelines on what station is appropriate to use in your modeling. First I'm going to explain the different variables defined in the air minute input file. This file is named als underscore airmin.imp. The first keyword listed is start end. This keyword lists the start month, the start year, the end month, and then the end year. So since we're doing the entire calendar year for 2014, we have January 2014 to December 2014. The IFW group keyword is the keyword used to determine if the station is part of the ice free winds or IFW group during the period that's listed under the start end keyword. Wind speeds less than two knots are treated differently for stations in this group and we'll have a link in the description to the PDF file listing all the stations and their IFW installation date. So if your station is not part of this group, you only need to enter the letter N. But our station is part of this group, so we list the letter Y for yes, that we are in this group. And then it's followed by the commission month, day, and then year. The next keyword is data file. This section lists the one minute data files. And this section must start with the keyword starting, and then it also ends with the keyword finished. And our files are located in the one minute directory. You can also see it on the left here in our file explorer. I'll actually go into that. You can see the files listed here. So in the input file, you need to list if they're in a different directory, and then you need to list the file name. And so you can see we have 12 months of data for obviously the 12 months of 2014, but also notice we have the January 2015 data file here. And we include this because the data needs to be converted to local time from Greenwich time. And if you don't do this, you'll actually have a few hours or a few missing hours at the end of the calendar year. Our next keyword is surf data. This is an optional section where you can list the standard hourly surface data file. And this section also starts with the keyword starting and ends with the keyword finished. Just like the data file section above, you need to list the pathway to the data file 
and then the hourly surface data file name. And if you list the standard hourly file, the one minute data are compared to those values. Our next keyword is out files. This is where you list your desired output files. This section must also start with the keyword starting and end with the keyword finished. And there are three different types of output files. The first keyword is our file and it's followed by the file name. And this output keyword is mandatory and this is the file that will be input into AirMet. The sum file and comp file are optional output files. The sum file is a comma delimited summary file and you can find the number of records per hour and the maximum, minimum, and average wind data per hour in this file. And then the comp file is a comma delimited file that lists the one minute and standard hourly data for comparison purposes. And this keyword is mandatory if you list the surf data keyword above. Thank you, Sarah, for that excellent explanation of the input files. We're now ready to, for you to actually run the program that will generate an output file that will be used later on as we move through the AirMod modeling system. So put this on pause until you're ready, you've got your computer ready, you've got your modeling um, directory open, and you're ready to follow Sarah along as she walks you through the program execution. We're going to use this batch file here to run Air Minute. Again, you can double click on it, but I feel the screens pop up and close too quickly, so I like to open a command prompt, and then you just type run underscore airmin.bat and then hit enter. I sped things up here, but you can see Air Minute processing each one of the one minute data files. I'm adding this snippet here to show you how to run Air Minute without using the batch file I've created. So go into your command prompt and you'll want to type the pathway to the executable and the executable name. So in our case, it's exe, Air Minute, and then Air Minute underscore 15272.exe, then hit enter. And so it's going to ask you the name of the input file that you have. So in our case here, it's als underscore airmin.inp, and then hit enter. And then you'll see it start to process all of the different one minute data files that we named in the input file. So while that's running, I'll show you what the batch file looks like. I'll open it in a text editor. So what we're doing here, Air Minute is, is a unique one and there's no other preprocessor that's ran like this. We are actually creating an input file here named inputfile.txt. And using this echo keyword here, we're going to put the name of the input file on the first line of this file here. So again, we're echoing, we're writing this, the input file name, into a file named inputfile.txt. And then to run the program, we type the path to the program executable here, and the, and the name here, and then we, this little caret is saying that we're inputting whatever, whatever we saved in this input file, we're inputting that value into the runtime uh, of the executable. And then we're, when we're done running the program, we want to delete the input file text just to clean up the folder. So that's how we're running Air Minute. And so again, you can run this batch file or you can run it in interactive mode using the command prompt. You can see it was a normal termination. We're ready to check out our output file. So this is a file that will be directly input into Air Minute. It lists some of the runtime information, such as the Air Minute version number, the WBAN ID for the station, and the call sign. And then also if it was part of the IFW group, it will show the IFW installation date and it will determine if five minute data was used or not. This file lists the two digit year, then month, day, then hour. It's important to note that this is the ending hour. We first then have the wind speed in meters per second and then the wind direction. And the values of 999 are 
missing value indicators. So the station was either down or it didn't have enough one minute data to calculate an average value. If you scroll down, you'll see valid data. We're finished running Air Minute, and so now your hourly wind data file is ready for input into AirMet. If you run into a problem with any part of your AirMod modeling project, we offer online AirMod training help that you can purchase from airmodtraining.com. During our session, you'll be able to ask us any question related to your AirMod modeling project. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, AirMod Training, so you'll be notified when we upload any new videos. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.